very much. Now, in our IBF Junior Middleweight Championship, both Matthew Hilton and Robert Hines come from ter terrific boxing traditions. Hilton comes from a great boxing family, while Hines was nurtured in the gyms in the city of brotherly love. That is Philadelphia. The IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. Undefeated Matthew Hilton defends his title against number one contender Robert Hines. Don Bufano's gym is a second home to the Hilton family. Matthew trains in this Jersey City gym just as his father did in the 60s and 70s. Dave Hilton, a rugged Canadian boxer, campaigned in several weight divisions but never became a champion. It's a rarity in boxing for a father-son team to produce a champion and maintain close family ties. But the Hiltons are the exception. Dave was schooled by his father, then passed the fistic legacy on to his five sons. Matthew is the first son to become a world champion. But he's the third Hilton to turn pro. Following older brothers, Dave Jr. and Alex. I went over and bought them hockey equipment. They started playing hockey. I think they played two or three games. They were the worst hockey players I ever saw in my life. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> and uh, they came back themselves and said they went, went to box. So uh, I never really pushed them into boxing. They were naturals. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they were, they were born to be fighters. Matthew Hilton, born to be a fighter, born to be champion. Right to the body connected. And now Drayton begins to fend Hilton off with the jab. Which is not a punch that Buster has as a regular part of his arsenal, but he's just picking with it. He's trying to let uh, Matthew know that it's there. Oh, what a right hand! And born with determination to stay champion. I want to prove that I am the best and get the, my goal to be the best, uh, to be in there with one day, to be there in the same class as Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler as they were. I wish I could, had been uh, as good as Matthew, uh, become world champion. That was always my dream, but it's, uh, my dream has come through, through Matthew, and uh, I'm very proud of him. I'm proud of all my boys, but uh, Matthew's the champion right now, and uh, what more could you ask? Number one contender Robert Hines is looking to shake the Hilton family tree right to its roots. And I always have been the underdog since I've been in boxing, so that's that's one good thing I feel. You know, so I feel great about it. I'm going out there and I'm going to take this title away from Matthew Hill. This slick southpaw from Philadelphia has been avoided by the top contenders. His climb up the junior middleweight ladder has been painstakingly slow. Now that he's reached the apex, he's anxious to derail the champ. He's a train coming. He's coming, man. So he can be stopped. You know, so I'm looking to just pick him off right there. That's what I'm doing. On the 4th of November, we have a, an appointment with Robert Hines, and he's the blocking point right now. And uh, I don't like uh, predicting the future until we get by Robert Hines. After that, we take one fight at a time. But uh, I really believe that Matthew is going to be uh, a household name very, very soon. I'm like an atomic bomb ready to explode and now they're gonna get a chance to see me. So the question now is, will Hilton explode tonight or will Hines be able to defuse him? Coming up, the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. Let's go back to ringside once again, Tim Ryan. Okay, Jim Hill, you see the challenger, Robert Hines, ranked number one by the IBF. Matthew Hilton, 29 and 0, will be defending his title for the second time. And let's take a look at uh, the tail of the tape. As we see uh, Hilton at age 22 making his second title defense came in at 154 with some difficulty Hines easily at 152 he's 26 years of age and will have a height and reach advantage under the IBF the 10 point scoring system in effect nine points or fewer to the loser of a round there is no standing eight count and there is no three knockdown rule it is to the discretion of the referee how many knockdowns can occur. And so for our ring introductions, let's go now to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world address for entertainment, the Las Vegas Hilton here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tonight, Top Rank Incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, presents the Super Fights, three world championship bouts.
This first bout, with the approval of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. Supervisor ringside, Mike Cusimano. The three judges will be Patricia Jarman, Tommy Kazmarek, and Bernie Cormier. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. The referee for this bout is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the white trunks with blue letters and weighs an even 152 pounds. From the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he brings an excellent professional record. 23 victories, 16 by knockout. Only one defeat and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the number one contender in the world today, Robert Bam Bam Hoy! And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the Royal Stewart plaid and weighing an even 154 pounds, he's from Montreal and brings an undefeated record of 29 consecutive victories. 23 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated junior middleweight champion of the world, Matthew Hilton. So we're ready to go with the first of three super fights here from Las Vegas, Nevada. Referee is Carlos Padilla. Let's pick up his final instructions. Chip seconds. Chip seconds so far. Okay. Hi, Hilton. You were already given instructions in your respective uh, dressing room. I expect that you obey the rules. Okay, any question? Okay, seconds come up fire. We're ready to go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the IBF. Junior middleweight crown, 154 pound limit. The judges Patricia Jarman from Las Vegas, Tommy Kazmarek from Brick, New Jersey, Bernie Cormier from Toronto, Canada. You know, Tim. Al Bernstein mentioned the fact that the Hilton was having trouble making the weight, but in the IBF, they weigh in the night before. I'd venture to say that Hilton's at least 160 pounds now. That was his own estimate of what he might be, uh, Gil, when we asked him that during a workout the other day. One thing I noted uh, in the corner is that uh, he didn't seem to have spent much time working out prior to the fight. In, in other words, that he came in here dry into the ring, whereas Hines had a pretty good sweat when he arrived into the ring. And I know sometimes uh, you are concerned when you see that in a boxer. That's right, Tim. First round is always very, very important. If you're not losing, you get nailed, you can go. Southpaw in the white trunks, Robert Hines from Philadelphia, the champion in Tartan, Matthew Hilton. And Hilton is supposed to be the puncher, and Hines is stalking Hilton. Strategically, that's a big surprise, but you mentioned Hines not really a mover, so he wants to take the thing to Hilton. <laughs> That looping right hand that Hilton will throw is left hook a little more classic, particularly the body. But if he lands that winging right, it's got the same power or more. Take Just missed an uppercut. Raise the chin of eyes. Hines nailed Hilton with a good right uppercut. Tim and hurt him. Hines is very effective on the inside with short punches. See him bring up that left hand uppercut. There's, there's that uppercut again. That's going to be a key punch in this fight. Good uppercut landed by Hines. And right behind uh, left of the body, the best body shot thrown by Hilton. He wraps that right to the body. Stumbled over Hines' toe. Now Hilton just firing away from outside. But Hines is landing the more effective punches by far. You know, it's amazing that Hilton is this wild. This is more wild than we've seen him in recent fights. Hines is really nailing with those short punches, punishing punches inside. That's what we said about Hines. He fights flat foot, but very, very effective. Good left hand by Hines, right down the pipe. Hilton fires back, takes another of those uppercuts inside. Landed to the body, but paid the price with that uppercut from Hines. Been very effective. Now Hilton teeing off to the body. 
and I would say Matthew Hilton has landed maybe eight or nine low blows in this first round, and they get a warning from Padilla sometime along the, round, the way. Well, these two guys have held nothing back as we reach the final seconds of round number one. Whoa, just at the bell, Hilton fortunately missed Hines because that was launched after the bell had just sounded. Let's follow the champion into his corner and his trainer, Dave Hilton, his father. Here we're going back. We're going to die. Get that left foot when you, when you get over. When you get him on the road, get that left foot on the outside of him. You find that left foot to the back of the right hand. You had him hurt there twice. What's the punch after the gun? What's the head, Give me a ring. Ring. Here, Back here, and show you go. that uh, yep. punch by Matthew Hilton that was launched just punch after the bell and just grazed Hines, who picked it up, but he wasn't expecting it to come. But the old defend yourself at all times. Hines uh, at all times. Hines had the good right, sense go. to lean back from it. We almost you had another mall installing yes. Von Harris. Very Not similar. Mercy. Now, there's a slight cut at the corner of the left eye of Robert Hines. It's whether it's open or not, it's definitely an abrasion that occurred in the final minute. Try and get a closer look at that for you. It doesn't seem to be any problem yet. One of the misnomers, I think, about Hilton is that he is a good left hook artist to the body and the head, but he really likes to throw that right hand and knock Buster Drayton down with it, so he's got power in that punch. And again, Hines is stalking Hilton. This is what they consider a boxer in Philadelphia, Tim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Philadelphia fighters, it's it just an expression in boxing that, that has more validity than most. When you refer to as a Philadelphia fighter, that is a high praise indeed. And it looks like Hines is cut from the cloth. Big right, winging right hand landed and backed up Hines from Hilton. That got Hines' attention. Big left hook. Yep, the left Big hand. Left hook. He's out on the him. ropes. He has him. Hines is down cold on the ropes. Thrown down by Hilton. Well, he was not unconscious, but it looked like he would have fallen down had Hilton not been so close to him. It was the big left hook that did it. The eyes are glazed. The challenger, Robert Hines. Hilton winging away. Now there's some blood underneath the right eye of the challenger. Hines in big difficulty here. Gamely fighting on, but he is in big, big trouble. You know, you see the liability of Matthew Hilton, though. Instead of jabbing his way in and throwing good, precise shots, he's just throwing wild Oh, punches. a right-hand lead that landed. And while you said it, Alley threw a straight right yeah, hand. Of course. <laughs> Figures. Hines in all kinds of trouble here. Obviously in great shape. He should be on the floor from the shots he's taken. Tim, I tell you, Hilton is expending a lot of energy. Better take advantage of it now. Looked to me like Hines was out on his feet. That first exchange over along the rope. But what a job he's doing here, staying alive through round one. And I think Hilton's tired right now. That expending a lot of energy out. Very tired. All those winging punches. Well, Hines is all busted up now. Low blow. Short punch scored by Hines inside as Hilton getting a little careless there, trying to finish off the challenger. Well, Tim, we said this was going to be a war, and it is. Hilton, I think, a little embarrassed with that last uh, exhibition of wrestling by both guys. Well, there's an uppercut lead and a slightly unorthodox Hilton. Hilton, <laughs> Hilton forgot everything he learned in the gym. Absolutely. Just brute strength now. He could jab his way in and throw anything he wants. But he's not. Obviously. Well, he may not be stylish, but he sure is exciting. Oh, yeah. That's round number two coming to a close. Hines somehow makes it to the corner, and that is a, a great display of stamina and conditioning because he took quite a beating. Uh, and Tim Hilton expended a lot of energy and he was tired going back to the corner. He needs that minute rest he's going to get now. That's how he got hit, that left hook. Because your hand was down.
what I'm saying? He's wild. He can't fight. He just wild. Just keep the man in the middle of the ring, Rob. He's swinging from the left field. Put your back up against the rope. Here we see Matthew Hilton has him on the ropes, right hand to the body. Winging wide punches, and there's that sharp left hook right on the button. How Hilton stood up under that punishment, I'll never know. How Hines was stood up, Tim. Right, because Hilton, I think, was leaning on him. I think that's what happened. I think he would have fallen down there. You know, Hilton has been trying to get the double left hook in through this fight. That one wasn't exactly the double left hook, but the one to the head did land. So Robert Hines gets through round two. We're into the third, scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Al Bernstein. Live from Las Vegas, Matthew Hilton, the Tartan Trunks, the champion, defending his IBF junior middleweight crown, his third championship bout. Tim, first minute of this round is a key. Matthew's had a chance to rest. They should be taking it to him now. You know, I think an important point is that Matthew Hilton, his last two times out, has not fought great fighters, Jack Callahan and Paul Whitaker. They went down under this kind of assault. Hines didn't. So can Hines come back now, and is Hilton able to deal with the top number one fighter? Well, he has the champ, the challenger in trouble again in the corner, and he's bleeding from the nose. Hilton keeping the pressure on. It's a warning from Padilla for low blows. He's, Hilton's walking in wide open, though, Tim. These guys may be tough, but they're made of flesh and blood. If he gets nailed coming in, things can change. And the left uppercut that you talked about, Gil, is, is landing so often for Hines. Well, Hines picking away effectively here. Both eyes swollen, and he's bleeding from cuts, but he's picking up his pace and taking the fight away from Hilton here. Hilton just covering up and taking a rest. Hines taking advantage of that. He's taking a rest and taking punishment. <laughs> Halfway through round three. Hines Good right. punches. Hines punches are so much more efficient than Hilton's. Hilton's are so wide and Hines are short and on the mark. You know, Hilton's in position with his left foot outside the right foot of Hines to throw the left hook to the body and the head, but he's not throwing it. There it is. <laughs> Winging left, and he missed the uppercut. Now picks up his pace, just winked at his corner. Blood from the nose of Hines swelling around both eyes, but he has made quite a comeback in this round. Takes a right to the ear. Wild right misses. And those punches take an awful lot out of him. I'm talking about Adam Hilton, the way he's wing winging those punches. He's going to have to have plenty of energy. Keep that up. And did he get nailed? A short left, scored by Hines. Hilton threw himself into the ropes with a miss. This is as undisciplined and wild an effort as we've seen from Hilton, and he was... Oh, there. right! Tremendous right hand! Hines knocked off his feet with that shot. He jumped right back up. But he was really clocked. And it was an undisciplined shot, yeah. too. <laughs> but he landed it. Matthew Hilton hates me. <laughs> Every time I say something, he does the opposite. I'd like to see him get a little better control of himself, Al. Yeah, but that, and when he's got the the power, you can do it, I guess. End of round three. Knockdown scored by Hilton. You win the round, he gets there. You get hit the whole wild right hand. You win the round, he gets so there. He has the challenger in all kinds everything. of trouble, but as uh, Gil Clancy has pointed out, uh, he's been using up a lot of energy. We're in the corner of the challenger. Robert Hines getting some attention in his face. Really marked up. And stop back up against the rope. Get some spit in. Give me the spit back Let's go back hey, to that knockdown. You know what I'm saying? Get your punches okay? Big right hand right on the chin and literally took him right off his feet. Well, the right, we've talked about the left of Hilton. The right is twice knocked down, Hines. A roundhouse punch as wild as you can throw one, but Hines was in position to, to get it. Okay. Get you on the ropes or something. The boy can take it right to him this time. Here we go with round number four. The champion in Tartan, Matthew Hilton. The challenger, Robert Hines in white. He has been taking quite a beating. Rallied well to much of round number three. And then suffered the knockdown on that roundhouse right from Hilton. It's ironic that he really won most of that round, and except for the knockdown, did extremely well.
Hilton uh, looking to rest again here. And I think that's uh, strictly because of what you commented on, Gil, that he's expended an awful lot of energy missing. <laughs> he has landed enough to back up Hines here early in the fourth. Matthew Hilton has better be able to take a good punch than just the way he's coming in now, he's gonna get nailed. Of course, he's loving him now. Hines too, but he's wide open. Hines throwing good punches in combination, coming forward, Hilton retreating. And what, what Hilton does not do, when he slips a punch, he doesn't punch back. That's the time for Hilton to punch. You know, this fight could be vaguely reminiscent of the Charles Williams-Bobby Chess fight. Williams down early, but coming back, and Hines may do the same here. Hilton content to just try to block these punches, but Hines getting a fair number of them through. Hilton's got to start to go back to work. Now he just smiles at Hines. He's got to be the toughest guy in the world. Anybody can Low smile. Low from, and a right to the chin. Hilton pours it on now. I would say that Carlos Padilla has been very lenient with Hilton. He's thrown about eight or nine really solid low blows. for these flurries in which, which it seems that he thinks that one of these is going to send Hines into oblivion and get it over with. But meanwhile, Hines pours on the points during these lulls by Hilton. Not only pours on the points, but Matthew Hilton is absorbing a lot of punishment, Tim. And I think one of the subtleties of this fight is the body work of Hines. We think of Hilton as the body puncher, but Robert Hines has done a good job downstairs. Mixing up his punches beautifully. Under 30 seconds we go. Round four, scheduled for 12. Just missed with a wild wing and right. And again, Hines continues to peck away with that right jab. I think the Hilton jab could be a very effective weapon in this fight, but it's just not there. Another good right jab, snapping back the head of the champion as the bell sounds ending round four. Follow the champion here, see what his father Dave Hilton has to say. Foot in the outside with the back of that right hand, like he did before. <laughs> Push him back. Don't let him come forward. This guy, you can take this guy anytime you want to put him together. Take his momentum. Not gonna body shots. Way, when, he, when he bends on the ropes, come back at that uppercut. Go reach for the throat. Put it up short. Sack him. Sack him. Sack him. Well, Matthew Hilton has right. gone a little bit low on the many occasions. We'll get a chance to see one here. Very low right hand, and he followed with another left low. I think I think that a point should be deducted from him. I think he's only had one warning that I recall. Uh, he should have had many more. I think. All right, we're into round number five. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Al Bernstein live from Las Vegas. Super fights still to follow. Michael Lott against Juan Roldan. Thomas Hearns against James Kinchin. Well, Dave Hilton told his son, he gave his son a lot of information between rounds, but the major thing that he told him was to back up Robert Hines. And Hines is coming forward, and he's picking Hilton apart. Here's a man who was nearly out on his feet in round number two, knocked down in round three, and still in control here. Got a good round number four, which we scored for the challenger. You know, the interesting thing to me is that Hilton is set up properly to fight a southpaw. He's got that left foot outside the right foot of Hines. He can jab, he can throw the hook, right, anything he wants. He's just not doing it. He's just looking to land that big right hand now. That's the problem. When you hurt a guy early in a fight sometime, you keep looking for the same punch over and over, and it never comes again. He should just fight like Matthew Hilton. Start banging that left hook underneath and bringing it back over. Put his punches together. Hines again scoring effectively in combinations right up the middle. Good straight punches. Uh, simply not busy enough. Hines is very accurate with his punches. We 
watch Hines in his final workout. Uh, Geller was certainly not an edifying display. He didn't look uh, good at all against two sparring partners, and it just goes to show you can't trust what you see in the gym. He's trained well and hard for this fight, and his conditioning and stamina certainly have already been evidenced. That certainly is true, Tim. In the gym, he was being muscled around and being banged around. And he's being aided by the fact that Matthew Hilton's defensive liabilities have really come to the forefront tonight. And Hines is an accurate puncher. Nothing on that right hand of Hilton. And Milton Bailey in Hines' corner did a great job on bringing that swelling down in both of Hines' eyes. Might be a slight nick at the corner of Matthew Hilton's eye. A little bit hard to see in the uh, lights here, but we'll get a closer look at it for you. Oh, good uppercut scored by Hines. That got Hilton's attention. Hilton better stop smiling and start punching. Big right hand again, straightened up Hines. He's in trouble on the ropes again, a left land. Another left to the head. Blood from the nose again, another left hand. Hines somehow staying on his feet. Hilton winging punches, landed another left. Missed on the follow through. You see how when I talk to him, he listens to me. <laughs> That's right, Joe. <yeah. laughs> Flying too hard again. Coming to the end of round five. Hines again is going to escape through this round. He scores two shots inside. What a tough guy, Robert Hines. Talk about Philadelphia fighters. Tremendous punishment by Hilton in the final seconds of the round. Hines again refusing to go down, punching back himself. In the corner of the challenger, you can see what kind of shape his face is in. He's really taking a punishing. And Dr. Wow, Romeo is up in the ring. Here we see Matthew with those wide punches. How they land, I'll never tell you, but they land. And he uses the left hook here also, in addition with the right. None are thrown the way they're supposed to be thrown, but they get there, and they're hard. There's that good short left hook. That out. one was good. Number six scheduled for 12. IBF junior middleweight crown at stake. Hilton the champion in his tartan trunks, defending for the second time. Robert Hines the challenger. Bloodstained white trunks. It's all his, and Hilton throwing it on again early in this round. Willing to take those shots inside, trying to land the big one. Hines scoring effectively inside. Robert Hines is such a good short compact puncher. Hilton is able to take those shots. Look at those nice combos. Can't take them forever. No. Hilton may have shot his bolt in the beginning of this round, Al. And he's holding, Gil. Yes, indeed. Looking to hang on right there. Blood from the nose of Hines again. What a tough guy. Not going to see many better fights than oh, this ever. Not, not more exciting in any case. And there's something to be said for the fact that most men have crumbled under this when Hilton has hit them with these shots. Hines isn't, and Hilton may not be ready to deal with that. A warning again. Okay, that's a warning. A warning again, and I think Padilla's saying that time, next time it'll cost you a point. And I'm pretty sure there will be a next time, unless this fight ends. Okay. Now, I believe the warning there to uh, Hines for holding behind the neck, pulling uh, Hilton into him. Hines' face all lumped up, bleeding from the nose. But he is the guy coming forward and scoring again. Boom. Dynamite right hooks by Robert Hines. Matthew Hilton showing he can take a shot. He has not been marked up yet, but he is obviously a tired young man. There's a good right counter from Hines. And there's a good left as Hilton pulled away. Hilton content to fight in flurries, and frankly, I think, gentlemen, that's all he's capable of doing right now. A little confused. He's starting to look around, looking for help. Well, Tim, as Gil said earlier, he's looking for that one right hand to end it, but the big right hands haven't ended it yet. Scored a knockdown in round three. Had Hines almost down in rounds two and five. 
Hilton grabbed on to Hines and then Hines hit him uh, from the back of his head to the back of the head. They both get warnings and separation from the referee. Despite the fact that Hines is all busted up, he's in much better condition right now than Matthew Hilton. We're in round six. 20 seconds left. Again, Hilton looking to load There we go again. Hilton looking to land that one big right hand. Can't do it. He's going to have to put him together. Good left by Hines. There he is winging that right hand. At least he started that with a jab. That was some, something positive for him. Making Hilton. a very big mistake. All he has to do is go back to what he does in the gym. Start, doesn't have to punch so hard. Put him together. Feel good? Let's take a look at some action now. Good, good accurate punching by Robert Hines. Every punch lands. Left, good right hook. Little one, this one gonna come out winging, right? So you keep that jab working. Don't okay. go to the rope right. like you did last right. time, bro. Right? You win in the fight, right. baby. Bang around the middle, come around the front. Come out winging the first part of the round. Then he okay. gets Take a deep breath. Okay. Where are you mouth feet? The, the Hines right? corner okay. trainer, Bill Haas, cool. second Don't Milt Bailey out. Telling their charge that he is winning. We've given him three rounds and killed him three, but of course, killed him with a knockdown in round three. And they may have counted round two as a knockdown, too, Gil, when and he threw him well down. I think yeah. they did count. So it would be two knockdowns for uh, for Hilton. And that uh, would be Hilton. the margin on my card because I've uh, given uh, rounds one, four, and six to uh, the challenger, Hines. Hilton's father gave Matthew adv good advice two, two rounds ago. He said, don't back up. Let back this guy up. Anytime that Hilton is going backwards, he's a target. And right. Hines just picks him apart. That's what we're seeing right here. Good jabbing by Hines. What Hilton has to do, if, if in fact he makes Hines miss, that's when he has to punch. Or even if he gets hit with a punch, he has to punch right back. You know, it's tough to say that the guy that's been on the deck twice is having a picnic. But right now, Robert Hines is having a picnic in this fight. He's far more accurate with his punches, a much better technician than Matthew Hilton. And now that's coming to the forefront. And, and Matthew Hilton is looking over to his corner for advice. He better look at Robert Hines, never mind the corner. Get the advice between rounds. Hilton won this title in a brawl against Buster Great in June of 87, defended once with a second round knockout over Jack Callahan. Al Bernstein are pointing out uh, correctly, not the toughest opponent he'll face. Hines uh, certainly the best and toughest man that he's been in with. And he has not been fighting frequently. Uh, contract disputes with Don King, uh, the promoter, along delays between bouts. And he is uh, now paying all these prices here in round number seven, scheduled for 12. But he has scored two knockdowns. And he, he just about hasn't thrown a punch this round. One very awkward left hook might be about the only one. And as you say, nothing else doing. Well, he needs a second win now. If he's in condition, he'll get it. Good left landed by Hines. Look how wide Hilton's punches are. And now he's pushing the right hand. Got nailed again by a good right hook. But now he's backing, now he's backing Hines up. Okay, bring it up, bring it up. Trying to trap him there on the ropes. Referee Padilla in quickly to separate them. It's amazing, Gil, as you said. When he backs Hines up, it's a completely different fight. He has to have the energy to do it, Al. That's the problem. He does it for a while and runs out of gas. As soon as he backs seven. up, he's right in Hines' range. Good combination scored by Hines. And the left hook of Matthew Hilton, his most powerful weapon, hasn't been seen for about three rounds. All he's looking to do is load up with that overhand right. There it is. There's the left hook. Right hand lead landed on the body. In the head. Bell sounds ending round number seven. Again, a good round for the challenger, Robert Hines, who dictated the pace and landed the punches. There is Michael Nunn, the IBF middleweight champion, as he prepares to take on Juan the Hammer Roldan from Argentina. Michael Nunn, undefeated in his professional career and one of the most charismatic on boxers on the scene today. 
Some of you may be seeing him for the first time. You will be seeing much more of this young man, no matter what happens here tonight. He is the favorite to defeat the veteran Roldan, making his last hurrah self-proclaimed. In you the corner of the champion, up. Matthew Hilton. He can't hurt you. He's tired of anything. you got to fire the shots. Can't stand and wait. Wait for him at all. Dave Hilton telling his son he's got to fire the shots. You can't wait. You've got to pick up the pace. Dave Hilton fought in every division as a pro from featherweight to heavyweight. Actually had two fights against heavyweights. Quite a remarkable career. Was never a, a big star or never a champion, but he's got a champion in the family in Matthew. Well, unless Matthew wakes up, it's only going to be for another four rounds. Look at this target practice. And the fact that Hilton did not do the body work he wanted to early in this bout is really hurting him because Hines, despite taking the beating to the head, is fairly fresh. And he's scoring at will with that good right jab. Another one landed. Matthew has to fly. He's not firing. And these punches are so wide. And yet you feel like he could land one and still hurt Hines. Well, it's literally a wing and a prayer. Yeah. If he lands one, yes, indeed, he could hurt him. But on the other hand, when he has landed, Hines is still here, and he has been taking this fight away the last couple of rounds. Hines is boxing like the consummate pro. One of those winging left landed. You better get off those ropes, Robert Hines, though, because he's still getting hit. But now, Al, he's beginning to have some good, solid punches. They don't seem to have the effect. Hilton's exhausted. Yeah, Hilton is exhausted, and he's in trouble because he's just absolutely out of legs from winging punches. And Hines picks up, fires two short lefts to back up the champion. Now Hines scoring it well. Consummate pro, Robert Hines. Hilton just literally punched himself out exchange over there and he is really paying the price winging again just on guts that's the only thing that Matthew has right now and whether he even wins or loses this fight Matthew Hilton's reputation is taking a beating now because this is such an undisciplined effort even if he should find lightning in a bottle and end up knocking Hines out Robert Hines what a display by this guy in trouble early in the fight, round number two. Well, we mentioned that he doesn't use his legs, Tim, but he sure does use those hands, those short little punches, punishing punches. There's another straight punch. You know, I alluded to the Chez Williams fight in which Chez had his crown taken away by Williams after Ed Williams hurt early. This fight looks just like it to me. Both handled by promoter Russell Peltz, who uh, was quick to point that out at the press conference for this fight the other day here in Las Vegas. This is a carbon copy of that bout. Absolutely. taken away and they're both firing at the bell but another good round for the challenger Hines we've been informed there was a point taken away Carlos Padilla informed the judges to take a point away from Hilton round number eight round we scored for Hines anyway but in the point count of course that could be damaging Hilton's legs are not holding him now Tim when he starts to wing those punches, he's falling in. Well, that that exchange in, in round number eight on the near ropes took his legs away from him. He just, he used so much energy, he was dog tired, nearly got knocked down himself. Another low blow by Hilton. There were two, really, and Padilla looking at it. More points may be taken away, and Matthew Hilton has to be careful if they take another one. He'll be close to disqualification. It would be a shame to be disqualified after such a gutsy effort in a great fight. We're in the ninth, and oh, another low one. Got another one. Got to take another point away, really. No, he doesn't. They won't. That was on the belt line. Hilton, death 
you know, they're fighting with desperation now, just absolutely winging punches without the legs underneath them. Hines certainly was very aware of that. And Hines has not been as busy this round as he as he was in the previous rounds, but I think that's because Hilton is trying to bull him backwards, make him go backwards. Anytime Hilton gives him a little room, Hilton is in trouble. Halfway through the There's night, the time Hilton should punch when he slips a punch. Combination scored again by Hines. Can you believe the punishment that Hilton is taking in this fight? We've talked about Hines' ability to take a shot, but you're right, Bill. For Hilton, it's astonishing. And he's virtually unmarked. There's a little bit of swelling around his eyes, but he certainly looks a lot better than Robert Hines does. We've got Hines ahead. If I was the referee, I'd be starting to take a good look at Matthew Hilton. Sometimes you're a little too okay, game for your own okay, good. Okay. Getting hit with a lot of punches. And he's very tired. Hines conducting a clinic in the Hilton corner. Over oh, under. Some thought the possibility of a Heinz victory very remote, and this would be classified a major upset. Hilton looking very confused and frustrated here. His mouth open, he's dead tired. And as we pointed out, Hilton probably has at least an eight-pound weight advantage right now. Robert Bam Bam Hines from Philadelphia. At the end of round number nine, and we look now into the dressing room of Juan Domingo the Hammer Rolled Dan from Argentina. Last seen here as he lost to Thomas Hearns in a real shootout. He had Hearns in trouble early and wound up on the receiving end of a knockout from Thomas Hearns and making what he himself has called his last hurrah. Later this evening, Thomas Hearns will take on James Kenshin for the NABF Super Middleweight crown. And in the corner of the challenger, Hines, you can see he's really absorbed a lot of punishment, but as we see it, he's not too far away from victory. And Milton Bailey's done a great job of bringing all that swelling down, keep him in the fight. It's good to have a solid veteran corner man in there to take care of these things. He doesn't look fresh as a daisy, but what a job he has done. Here's a guy that was nearly out in round two, knocked down again in round three, almost down again in round five. Since that time, we've given every round four in a row to the challenger Hines. Champion has put himself in a situation, as we view it, where he's going to require the knockout he's so desperately been seeking in order to win. You know, I did Hilton's last fight against Paul Whitaker, and there were signs in that bout that he was punching a crisper, shorter, using the jab, doing all the things that he has not done in this bout. Trying too hard, Al. Yeah, maybe that's it. After that first early knockdown, we saw he could get this guy and hurt him with one punch. He's been looking for that one punch all night long, forgetting all about technique. And Hines, a great technician. And Hilton is fighting like he's in a ballroom. Exactly. It. Anything that he's been taught, he forgot everything he's taught. Just hard guts and strength. That's all he has now. And he's very fortunate that more points haven't been taken away from the low blow. And Padilla is starting to take a look at Matthew Hilton. Well, he did lose one, did he not, Al? One point? For yes, he lost yeah. one and, yeah. and could have lost more. Yeah. Gil, you're absolutely right. This is about the time when you have to take a long look at Matthew Hilton. He's so tired, he's taking tremendous punishment. But I guess the, the point also is that he might still hurt Hines with a big overhand right. Well, you have to think of his safety first, yeah, though, Al. That's true. And if Hines put a little pressure on him now, I think that uh, they might look to stop the fight. Winging right hand by Hilton, taking on the arm of Hines, the challenger. Hines perfectly balanced in there most of this fight. It's helped to keep him up in a couple of situations where he's had tough shots early on. It's interesting to watch fighters emerge in key fights, and really that's what's happening here with Robert Hines. 
I alluded to the Williams fight. There have been others. Michael Nunn did it when he fought Frank Payton. We're apparently looking at it in Robert Hines, a fine boxer who is now showing his wares. Beautiful combinations. Again, head and body using the uppercut inside effectively. Well, you look at his record, really, apart from Kevin Howard, Tony Montgomery, Steve Little. Uh, that, that's about it in terms of uh, Class A fighters that uh, Hines has been in with and has victories over. But he is showing that he was ready for a title shot. I think they should visit Matthew Hilton between rounds. Treat. Hines is absolutely in control. It'll take a one lucky big shot for Hilton as we see it. And here comes the champion to his corner. His father Dave waiting for him. This is an exhausted champion here in his second title defense. Practically drowned him with water. Show, show him what you can do. Put yourself out of there. All I have is digging in from home and everything else. Show him who that the real Matthew Hilton is. You know what you can do. For each next two rounds, punch them in the hell. Keep him on, keep him on the ropes and don't let him off. I'm going my left track. All right, Jambatish. For six minutes, you can throw it. Hey, show me your mate. Okay, we got a few more rounds. Two rounds more are scheduled. There's the challenger, Hines, the champion. Hilton looking exhausted and discouraged at this point. Interesting byplay in Hines' corner at the end. They said, we only got the three more rounds. He looked at him and said, no, two. <laughs> That's a good sign. There's a guy that really has it all together. He knows what's going on. Hilton comes out winging. Oh. This could be his last stand, but Hines punching right back with him. And at least half of those body shots were very low. Keep it up, and Hines is calling Hilton to come on again. I think he, he feels that a little something's left. Matthew Hilton's punch. Oh, another hey, low blow Padilla, by Matthew Hilton. Padilla must take a point away. This is really a, a, totally wrong for him not to take a point away from Matthew Hilton. So Hines just let Hilton punch himself out, and he turns it on. Padilla had better take a look at Matthew Hilton. Hilton finally escapes along the ropes on rubber legs. He is glazed. We have to remember that Hines has now been expending some energy too, Al, you know? He's looking at the referee, Matthew. Yeah, looking I, at the referee. I don't think he wants to continue at all. I think that flurry in his own corner. He is completely out of last, it right now. His last go-round. Completely out of it. And hardly stand up. I'm almost tempted to yell, come on, ref, take a look. Little cut under the left eye of Matthew Hilton now, trying to get his feet under him. Hines keeping up the punishment, pecking away, throwing good combinations. And we made the reference to Bobby Chez and Charles Williams. This would make it precisely like that if they had to stop the fight at this point. Hilton looked to his corner somewhat imploringly there seconds ago. Well, if I was in Matthew Hilton's corner, I would stop the fight. Absolutely. Right hand by Hines landed, rocked Hilton again. And the interesting oh, an uppercut, is... damaging shot from Hines, and Hilton looking to his corner. For? And that's his dad in the corner. That's just an interesting point. Blood from the nose now of the champion, Hilton. I know they're tough guys, but, you know, it's better to come back and fight another day. He's still a raw okay, talent. 22-year-old okay, okay. champion Matthew Hilton. Never faced defeat, 29-0, but he's looking it right in the eye at this moment. Game gritty display by both fighters. But what a job by Hines coming back from early damage to take control of this bout. There's nothing on Hilton's punches at all now. Certainly when he gets back in between this round, you would think the cornerman would decide it's over, or the doctor could step in and say that. Final seconds of round 11. Now, Hilton.
looking in really bad shape. A cut under the left eye, more swelling around the eyes. Dr. Flip Omansky is coming up to take a look at the champion. Watch the water. Put him on the ropes, don't let him off it. You can knock this guy out. Put his hand down. Run around for you too, man. Knock this guy out. Flip Romanski. No. No, we thought maybe Flip Romanski was going to stop that. Hein jumped up as though that's what he thought, but they're into the final round. It was just a show by Hines that he is ready and able for the final and 12th round. Blood from the corner of the right eye of the champion, Hilton, and cut underneath the left eye. Hines' face all swollen from early damage, but he is the boss now. That right hook is very, very effective by Robert Hines. He's in command. And there is no offense coming from Hilton. And in the last round, the punches he did throw were so weak. Well, you know, you figure after the minute rest, Al, he do like he did before and let it all hang out at least the 30 seconds, but he doesn't have any energy left at all. I think only his pride prevented him from saying in the corner, let's stop it. And I am really astonished that his corner did not stop it. Again, Al, because it, this kid could be ruined after this one fight. First champion in Canada to become first uh, boxer in Canada to become a world champion in 44 years. And now uh, looking at the loss of that title after just one defense. Plus, he can come up with something that none of us uh, watching here think he's capable of. Uh, this championship is going to go to Robert Hines. Or unless there's some voodoo economics on the scorecards. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Always to be kept in mind, but it would... Uh, in this case, that'd be really wild. Yeah, we'd, we'd certainly all be astounded. Punishment is unnecessary. Absolutely. Punishment he's taking out is unnecessary. In the last two rounds, it has been. You hit on it about three rounds ago that he was starting to fade so badly that it could be stopped. Well, now Hines is really cocky. You know, you're dealing with the question of the fighter's safety, his There's future right career. Everything. Everything is on the line here right now. His marketability, everything. And, the, and, and it is being jeopardized badly. Hines fires him back to the ropes again and lands a good, what? solid right hand. A pointless exercise for sure, gentlemen. And sometimes you do question these father-son combinations in boxing. Not too many of them have been very successful. Well, the officials could step in also. Yes, they could, but uh, we've certainly uh, indicated Carlos, that Dave Hilton might have stopped this uh, yes. sooner himself. Yes, absolutely. Every punch he's taking now may affect this kid for a long, long time. Final seconds of the bout. Hines still on the attack. And what a job by Robert Hines. We have to assume he's going to be the new champion, barring, as uh, Al Bernstein indicated, on our card, we gave him the last six rounds and then two earlier than that. So he should be a comfortable winner, but uh, we will get the official count from the judges at ringside. Yeah, we got it. How you feel, buddy? Feel good. Yeah, all right. Tap. Patricia Drummond of Las Vegas, Tommy Kazmarek from Brick, New Jersey, Bernie Cormier from Toronto, Canada will be... He's an exhausted young guy. He has used it all up. No, he will not. There's the knockdown scored by Hilton back in the fifth round, in the third round, pardon me, round three. And Hines has survived that, and you see the difference in the two boxers from the 
nine rounds in between. Suddenly it's Hines with the champion, literally staggering around the ring, and Hines in complete control, dominating the action in this final 12th round. And what a difference in the punch. Ladies and gentlemen, before I give the final score, let's have a hand for both Robert Hines and Matthew Hilton. Here is the official story. Well, I've got nine rounds marked for Hines. Here it is. Patricia Jarman has it 112 to 111. And Tommy Kazmarek scores it 114 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new junior middleweight champion of the world, Robert Bam Bam Hines! What a moment for this young man, Robert Bam Bam Hines, overcome with the emotion of it all. He is just absolutely overcome. But what a tremendous display of ability, guts, determination by Robert Bam Bam Hines, lifting the crown of Matthew Hilton. Well, there is an exhausted former champion. And uh, gentlemen, uh, let's talk first about Hines. Uh, here's a guy nobody knew before, and obviously he's now a new figure on the scene, and you're both concerned about the effect of this fight on Matthew Hilton. Gil? Yes, uh, I, I think that Matthew Hilton took punishment that was unnecessary for the last nine minutes of the fight. That punishment could affect his entire future career as a boxer. You can't take that kind of punishment unnecessarily. He had no chance to win the fight. He was out of steam. He couldn't hurt the other guy. I'm surprised that the father didn't stop the fight or Carlos Padilla. Well, now, as far as Robert Bam Bam Hines is concerned, uh, Al, uh, your impressions of this guy, uh, who's now really made quite an impact. He's as good a technician as there is in the junior middleweight division, and that's a division that's wide open. Uh, Donald Curry out there waiting to maybe fight Mugabe. So there's a lot open for him in this junior middleweight division. Okay, Robert Bam Bam Hines of Philadelphia, the new IBF junior middleweight champion. What a job by this young man. Made a lot of new fans here today. Let's now go to our host, Jim Hill.